Hello and welcome to this first kind of tier list style video on my channel. If you haven't been here before, basically what I do, I like to review games on my channel, do occasional like kind of tutorials for games, upload stream highlights and all that kind of stuff. But um, today I thought I'd do something different. The uh, the Spyro series of games is one that's been pretty, uh, pretty significant to me throughout my life. I remember playing a lot of these games when I was younger and I've got pretty strong opinions about these games, about most games in general really. And this is kind of why I decided to make a YouTube review channel to kind of express my opinions on these classic games and maybe try and bring them back into the light for some people. But today I thought I'd um, rank these games kind of best to worst, apart from the few that I haven't played, mainly being like the most of the Legend of Spyro series, apart from the first game and a few of the GBA titles. Um, quick disclaimer beforehand, I feel like I really shouldn't have to say this, but this is my opinion. If you think different to me about these games, that's absolutely fine, but like don't don't come and show hate because I've got a different opinion on your fucking shitty ass purple dragon game. Anyway, we can uh, we can get into this now, I think. So we'll start with the uh, the bottom games, the games I think are the worst. This shouldn't really come as a surprise. I just think Enter the Dragonfly is kind of a bad game. I talked about why in my review, which I'll put in the cards now, in the top right, and I'll link in the description as well. But basically, it's just, it's a weak game. There's this incredibly poor frame rate. The game, like, can't run consistently at all. Then on top of that, you've got, like, really weird kind of player models, environments that don't fully match up to their like belongings and the things inside them and it's just it's short of a game but even if you look past that there's there's nothing here to substance a real spyro game there's like few collectibles there's not a lot of npcs and like kind of variety and there's only one boss fight like there's one hub world then i could talk about into the dragonfly for fucking ages like i don't think i need to say why this is a bad game it's just really kind of it makes me feel ill just to talk about it and just to look at it like look at it what the fuck is that anyway moving on now spyro orange i remember very very vaguely playing spyro orange on an emulator i believe i think i played it for about an hour and just got completely lost and just didn't like the game because i've played some of the spyro gba games and this one just feels completely fucked. I don't think this should have been a game and judging from the community's general opinion about this game I think it's acceptable to put it in the D tier. Even if the community thought this was like some godsend of a game I don't think it would be that good in my eyes still. It wouldn't be enough to change my opinion It's just kind of a shit game. You know, there's this weird crossover with Crash and Spyro Which I guess is kind of cool, but like other than that, it's just a mini game collection. It's a very mediocre mini game collection Right, uh, Legend of Spyro now. So Again, I've got more of an experience with this game compared to the last, as in, I remember playing it on the Xbox 360, I believe. Xbox 360, yeah, I think it was on the 360. But this game's very different to most Spyro games. It's kind of like, if you want to look at the Crash Bandicoot games and then Crash of the Titans, it's kind of like that. It's an attempt to reboot the series, but it went in a really bad direction compared to Titans. I don't think, if you're looking at Crash of the Titans, I don't think that's a really bad game. It's it's pretty good. It's kind of airtight, just not a Crash game. You could say the same about this game. It's definitely not a Spyro game, but it's got Spyro in it. But it's just cringe. I can't, I can't play it. I don't like the art style, the animations. It's in a similar boat to Enter the Dragonfly for me in terms of those. Not a fan of the voice acting or the story or the gameplay or anything. This just isn't the Spyro I know, and this really isn't the Spyro I like. And it encourages a lot of very, very weird community shit. Really, some really fucked community shit, to be honest, but. Anyway, next game. So I might be surprised to see this in the C tier, but I think it's kind of justified. Skylanders. I'm gonna put Skylanders in C tier. Not the entire franchise, of course, just the first game. I don't think Skylanders is as bad as people make it out to be. I can see why people don't enjoy it and why Spyro fans are pissed at this game and how they think, oh, this is, this is ruined Spyro, this fucking, fuck you, you've ruined my game. But like, is it that bad? The, ca the cash grab part I can understand, you know, selling out to these like figures, like, you know, Disney Infinity, like Amiibo, that kind of shit. Like, this was like the first of its kind. I'd, I'd call it a pioneer. I think it's confident in that kind of um, toy for like character in-game kind of aspect. I don't think it's awful, but it's okay. And it's nice to be able to level up these characters. The story's, the story's pretty shit. And this is definitely catered towards more of a younger audience, which you can understand. But I wouldn't shit on Skylanders too much. And I'd probably rather play the first Skylanders than play any of the games below it in this list. So moving on now, Spyro Season of Flame. Season of Ice and Season of Flame will put in the same, uh, we'll put in the same boat here. There's not much I can say about these. I've got them on the Game Boy and I remember playing them on the GBA player on the GameCube. Uh, they're okay. They're 
surprisingly good Spyro games for being on handheld, you know, that uh, kind of isometric gameplay style. I don't really have much to complain about. It's just not as good as the games above it in this list. You know, I'd, uh, I'd rather play it than... I'd rather play it than the games below it. I'd put this very similar, like, very much in the same boat as Skylanders. For being a portable Spyro game back in the day, it was it's kind of incredible to look at now, to be honest. But... If we're looking at Spyro games to sit down and enjoy, especially if you're looking on like the GameCube where you can play on like a big screen, there's some games I'd rather play personally. Anyway, let's uh, move up the list now. Shadow Legacy on the DS, uh, B tier, very mid game, uh, very okay. I don't have very strong opinions towards the games lower in this list besides like Enter the Dragonfly. Maybe the isometric Game Boy games, but like, um, it's not bad. It's kind of in the same style as the handheld Game Boy games, but on the DS, of course. It's not isometric, it's a lot more open world, but the mechanics for it are kind of weird. It feels like a Spyro game, you know, there's familiar casts and all that, and I can give it that. I don't mind having it in the mid. I can live with it, putting it above the rest. Anyway, next Spyro game is a Spyro Reignite trilogy. So, if you're looking at re-enjoying the, uh, if you're looking at re-enjoying and recapturing the original charm of the trilogy, I think this does its job. You know, it's a it's a brilliant game, first off. Uh, it's based on three of the best platformers on the PS1 of all time. So, there's you, there's not much where you can fuck it up, really, is what I'm trying to say. It's pretty good, you know. Spyro 1, 2, and 3, all there. Just how you remember them. Uh, improved music, done with Stuart Copeland still. Really, really like that. Huge fan of that. The main collectibles, all still there. And it's just as fun and challenging to 100%. Interesting runs to come out of it, and a fun game to play in general. The main reason I bought my PS4, to be honest, back in 2018, was to play this game. I do just, I think it's okay, but I would definitely not put it higher than the original trilogy. There's some very, very small kind of changes in there um, that I'm not a fan of. The biggest being the art style. I really don't like the art style of this game. It's very furry reminiscent, if you will, which I'm not a fan of. I don't mind Spyro. The Spyro animation is pretty cool. The voice acting for Spyro is pretty sick. But the rest of the character models, like say for a few i not not my taste not for me i can see the effort put behind it i can see the art direction and i can somewhat appreciate it but i'm not a fan i'd rather stick to the original ps1 games to be honest call me uh call me out for that do do what you will with that but that's just that's what i think that's my opinion anyway we uh we're getting up there now in the list so let's move on to the ps1 games now the original trilogy we've got the other ones out of the way so let's um let's start with uh with spyro 2 with does very job sorry we're um we're eu over here so we have gateway to glimmer so we'll, we'll put gateway to glimmer there instead but Spyro, the Spyro 2, Gateway to Glimmer, or Ripto's Rage, it's the same game if you didn't know. It's a good game. Uh, it's a lot of people's favourite game. You know, you've got a lot of stage variety. You've got the small, like, cutscenes in and out of levels that really make it, like, shine. You've got the whole, like, Ripto arc with uh, with crushing go up over the story. The whole, like, really nice kind of back and forth antithesis with Spyro and Ripto. And then you've got the, the cast introduced, like, Allura, the Professor, Hunter and all that. I can see why people love this game. And it's easy A for me. I don't think any of the games on the PS1 are lower than A. It's a very easy A tier game for me. It's a game I can sit down and kind of play and enjoy whenever. Same with the other Spyro games in the original trilogy. But I think I don't like it as much as the other two. But I think it does everything right that a Spyro game needs to do. And it paved the way for Spyro 3 and the series. It kind of stapled platformers back then. Um, you can't really underestimate that. You can't really undermine that. It's a very powerful game. And uh, I'm one of my favourites, yeah. It's, it's up there. But um, anyway, let's move on now. So now we have Spyro 1. Spyro the Dragon, the original Spyro game. The first Spyro game, if you will. Now, I don't know what exactly makes me prefer this game to Spyro 2. Because looking at it objectively, I think Spyro 2 is the better game. But whether it be nostalgia or whether it just be enjoyment, I think Spyro 1 is way better. Like, you have a lot of people that enjoy Crash 1 over Crash 2. Even though Crash 2 is kind of the, uh, the, uh, the, the successor in every way. Crash 2 is kind of like, yo... I'm gonna do everything Crash 1 did, but better. It's very similar to that. I just love Spyro 1. I love the bosses. I love Nasty Nork. I love the music above all. I think this has got like one of the best music, one of the best music soundtracks in the original trilogy. And I don't know what it is that makes me prefer this to this, but uh, let me know your thoughts down below on these two. Uh, now's kind of the big decider. You've got Spyro 3, which people either love and they think it's the best Spyro game, or people hate and they think it's like, the worst. I fall into the former. I think it's good. S tier for me. I would not mind putting Spyro Year of the Dragon S tier. I just think it's phenomenal. The characters can make the gameplay slow, admittedly. It can be really, really like awful to play with Agent 9 and Sergeant Bird. Ultimately, they don't appear for that much of the game. They are quite invasive on Spyro's gameplay style. There's a lot of funky kind of new stuff here, but I'm not all against that, to be honest. It's it's kind of okay. It's, it's whatever to me. Absolutely love Bentley's sections in this game. I think they're really nice. Uh, same with Sheila's. I think Sheila's are all really good. The overworlds, the hub worlds, brilliant. There's nothing wrong with them. I can't really complain about them. The speedways, 
really good again. It's all just, there's, there's so many things that make this game brilliant to me. And I, I think I'll have to save it for a Spyro 3 review, to be honest. Yeah, now let's go on to the top Spyro game of this list. The, uh, the game that I think is the best Spyro game, which uh, is A Hero's Tale. So this is very, very much nostalgia for me. I've, I've easily played the, um, A Hero's Tale the most out of any Spyro game. I've played through it uh, not completion, but near completion, 100% uh, completion that is. I've played through it a lot, gotten a lot of collectibles. I've gotten all the dragon eggs, I'm pretty sure. I uh, just, I love everything about this game. I love all the worlds. I love how it's more kind of a, a less hub world, less navigation. It's more, it's all there. You walk around each world and every kind of movement and journey you make feels significant rather than just like a, a bridge from one area to the next. Everything feels impactful. Everything's nice. The music's not as strong, I will admit, but the visual, like the visuals of the game, the art style, the art direction, direction. I think it's incredible. I think the worlds are all really nice. One, two, three, and four. It's all just, um, they're all really good. If I were to pick up much, it would be the gameplay styles again, kind of like with Year of the Dragon, but they're much more kind of like free choice in this game. You're not forced into going down a specific character kind of gameplay style if you don't want to. It's always kind of tucked away in the corner of the level, and if you want to visit it, you can at any time. So for people who don't like loads of gameplay styles and want to just stick to your kind of traditional, like orthodox Spyro kind of gameplay, then it's perfect for you, really. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my Spyro games tier list. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this list, to be honest. So thank you for watching my tier list on Spyro games. This is a kind of new style of um, video for me. If you liked this, then be sure to let me know down below. And I'd consider doing this for Crash games or like any other kind of games. So I've got I've got a few ideas in mind and I'd love to make a series out of this, but we'll see in the future about that. Subscribe to get more notifications around here if you want to immediately see these videos when they roll out. Uh, and if you want to get extra notified to make sure you don't miss an upload, then join my Discord server, link in the description. I post a link every time I'm live there, every time I upload there, every time there's something you want to know, I'll post it on there. Anyway, my name is Flinny and this has been the Spyro Games tier list. Thank you for watching and take care.